So, what does making a record mean to you? There's a path that we all must take to reach the dreams that we seek to make. To make a record is like creating the story around the song even more intricate than what you do in the first place, writing the song. When you produce, it's like making the whole story around the song and, and the concept and it's almost like writing a play that you can just put in all the funny and, and interesting details that you want to have in it. And you know, when you get the masters back, it's almost like Christmas and wrapping a present is just the best feeling in the world. Even though it's a lot of work, it's um, so much creativity and, and joy put in it that it's just one of the best things I know. The songwriting process is my favourite bit by a mile. I love writing the songs. Um, and then we kind of get into the nitty gritty recording bit, which can be either really awesome or an tedious nightmare. It just completely depends on the producer, on how well it kind of comes together. And sometimes songs which you don't think are going to end up um, kind of being the main kind of focus of releases uh, kind of take place in the studio and turn into just um, beasts in their own right. Fantastic. Uh, and then you have the kind of painful media PR slug and kind of chicken everything out. And then you get to go on tour and kind of gig with it. It's, um, it's a fantastic kind of big uh, package of. Uh, kind of highs and lows whilst you do it. It's, it's a blast. I, I wouldn't do anything else other than it. It's great. Songwriting for me is a very special way of communicating my feelings and my thoughts and it can be all from political views to love and friendship and, and longing and all those kind of things. It's just it's just a world of feelings, uh, emotion, moods and, and, and experiences I think. Songwriting means probably more than anything else which I do in music, whether it be production or, um, or kind of live performance. Having spoken to different songwriters and obviously been at Lipram, I've uh, been on the songwriting course and met loads of different people. Um, everyone kind of goes about it in different ways. Me, I'm a bit of a cross between a guitar and a kind of vocal melody kind of guy. So some people like writing riffs and a lot of songs you hear on, a lot of kind of really big songs are riff based. So you have like a really good guitar lick or a vocal vocal or something like that. And the rest of the songs kind of built around that. For me, I'll kind of get a rough kind of idea for chords and structure um, and vocal melody as soon as possible. So a lot of the time I just sit down and kind of spout absolute rubbish at a very high volume whilst playing the guitar and see kind of what melody comes out and which chords work with what. Um, that's the way I do it. I know people who are really kind of calculating with it and that works fantastically as well. They sit down and say, I've got this really good hook, I want this, this set of four chords, so I'm gonna put them in this structure and we're gonna have a massive chorus there and kind of drop down there. And But I, I like to kind of let it kind of flow as free as possible, which can take some time. And I have some songs I've written the kind of basic bare bones of it have been done in 20 minutes and then but it's been a good month before the song's actually finished because I've been waiting for that next kind of spark of inspiration to choose the order and the layout and uh, the kind of feel of it so. When it comes to the process of the songwriting I think I have a strange approach because it often doesn't take me more time to write a song than to actually play it. I constantly go around with music in my head um, it sounds like I'm mental, I'm not, but uh, I always have music in my, in my head and in my mind and lyrics and song ideas. So when I sit down in front of the piano, it's just there, like it's always been there. The, the most important thing is is the inspiration side of it. I think I think that um, you shouldn't really if something's not coming naturally to you, you, you shouldn't sit down and flog it. I don't. But some people do believe in doing that and believe like going in it religiously, like work, and they have to work every day. It, I think if the inspiration's not there, then go and find the inspiration somewhere else. And you know whether that be going to the pictures, whether it be going to parks, you know whether it be going for walks in your city, whatever it might be, whatever inspires you, plays, theatre, art galleries. I do that with my students now. I take them once a year. I take them to the Walker Art Gallery and hope that, you know, they'll, they'll be just even the title of a picture or something that might spark some lyrical, you know, inspiration for them. The Beatles used to do it all the time. They'd be singing about Strawberry Fields or Penny Lane. 
<clears throat> you know, geographical things can be really inspirational as well. So, um, so I kind of believe in that. I kind of believe in don't don't kind of flog it if, if, if the inspiration is not there. You know, think of other ways to let it come natural. Artist managers have to get involved with all aspects of the band creatively as well. So an artist manager has good ears. They should have an appreciation of what the record companies and the publishers want and also what the public want. So they should be able to advise a band that that should be an A side or a B side of a single in those days when there used to be A sides and B sides. What order tracks should be, which tracks they should do, what they shouldn't do. Um, album covers, does it communicate? Uh, even to the extent of what they wear and how they um, hold themselves when they're in front of the public. So there's those creative aspects. When I was um, managing Happy Mondays, I used to ply them with tapes of uh, Northern Soul tracks because I used to say, not that I wanted them to do Northern Soul music, but I felt that they needed to get that sort of vitality and vibrancy that we'd get from that sort of music into their music. When it comes to my music, I'm really, I really like to be involved in every single part of it and sometimes that can be detrimental and it's worth kind of giving a bit of control to other people but um, I, I like being kind of involved with it from day one. I mean, no one knows better than I do how I want my record to sound like so I was pretty involved. It's also important though to let others have their creative say because, I mean, if you're just one person producing it, it can be quite flat and you need other people's opinions and, and their creative input. I think that the songwriters and the artists themselves are not enough involved in the actual production and mixing process. And as for the kind of um, industry production side of it, so it's your press and your PR and getting the CDs made, um, I have a kind of 50-50 hand with my management and that, so I, went, I have a company I use for all my CD. The EP creation, so I went back to them this year. Um, and then I designed the artwork in conjunction with some guys at uh, MMU in Manchester. Uh, they gave me a big pile of artwork a few years ago that I'm still kind of picking bits from and editing, um, which has been fantastic. And yeah, just kind of tied it all together between them and my, and my management company. We kind of meet in the middle and say, uh, you do this half and I'll do this half and we'll, we'll hopefully everything will come together. I think management is probably one of the most important links in in a musician's career. My skill is to write songs and perform them, um, not necessarily be a manager. The artist manager looks after the artist in all respects. They um, help the artist develop, they guide them in the work that they do, they help them produce better material, they get them ready so that they're able to be signed for publishing record deals, merchandising deals, to be able to go out on tour live. They govern all their business relationships, they ensure that they maximise their revenue streams. Basically that's what a manager does. Characteristics somebody aspiring to be an arts manager would need would be to be a bit of a person person, be able to judge people well, be able to recognise talent, be able to recognise when people are on the right track and what connects to a potential audience, whether that be a business audience like a record company or the actual public audience. Um, I think another factor is that, and I've often said this, and sometimes it's a bit controversial, uh, is that they have to be able to be very resilient in a sort of party way. So in other words, they have to be able to do everything the band does, just to have some sort of affinity with the band, but still be able to work when everybody else is flat out on the feet. How to make a star in three minutes. Find someone with talent. If you can't find someone with talent, don't worry. Just find someone. And that's how it started off. And I think that's true. <laughs>